Let us pray. Cleanse our conscience, we beseech you, O Lord, with thy most gracious favor, and further us with thy continual help that all our works began, continued, and ended in you. We may glorify your name, and finally, at your mercy, obtain everlasting life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. To him 168, him 168. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, church. Good morning. Welcome to this, our celebration of the Holy Eucharist for the fourth Sunday of Easter. Our worship continues on page 101. Please turn to page 101. Blessed be God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed Lord, Lord and, and Father, we have assembled, assembled in your name and, and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace 
to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word, teach us to pray for your world and your church, grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice, and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you, to you all, all hearts are open, open all, all desires known, and, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and, and peace, peace to, to his people, people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. The Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Most High, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In, in the, the glory, glory of God, God the Father. Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose Son, Jesus, is a good shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we, will, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the ministry of the word, the first reading. A reading taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verses 36 to 43. Acts chapter 9, verses 36 to 43. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which is Greek, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, he took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the appointed psalm psalm 23 psalm 23 The reading of the 23rd Psalm, beginning at the first verse. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and lead me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you, for you are with me, me. your you rod and your staff to comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second reading. The second reading is taken from Revelation 7, Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 to 17. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 to 17. I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all the tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb of God, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to you, our God, forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, So, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within the temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual hymn, hymn 177, hymn 177.
you and also with you a reading of the holy gospel according to saint john glory to christ our savior saint john chapter 10 beginning to read at the 22nd verse and it came to pass that at the time the festival of dedication took place in jerusalem it was winter and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they'll never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise Christ, Lord. Please be seated. This being the fourth Sunday of Easter, which is actually midway in the Easter season, the church fathers focus on the Easter joy. And uh, for the readings this weekend, the fathers are focusing on the, the Easter joy and uh, the community that celebrates the Easter joy. They are making the point that the community that celebrates the Easter joy is a suffering community that conquers and not a conquering community that happen to suffer to suffer and uh, to direct our thoughts as we reflect on this i've chosen words from the codex set aside for the fourth sunday of easter i invite you therefore to take your liturgy book up return to page 169 169, and let us read that collect together. Page 169. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The operative words being, 
grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. I speak to you, therefore, in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. If we were to start our reflection with the gospel assigned for today, it's in John chapter 10, verses 22 to 30. One of the first things that will strike us is that Jesus, walking in the temple, is surrounded by some Jews who have put a strange question to him. How much longer are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us so plainly. And on first glance, we may come to the conclusion, this is a rather genuine question, that here it is, you had some persons searching for truth about the identity of Jesus Christ, and they have come and spoken to him plainly. That as we follow through in this 10th chapter of the Gospel of St. John, we begin to see a different picture emerging. First of all, Jesus' response is simply this. I have told you already, but you did not believe. The works that I do bear testimony about who I am. And uh, as this chapter goes on, we note that because Jesus continued to speak truth to them, they wanted to stone him. When we go back to the opening part of this chapter, we notice that Jesus makes a statement, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I know my own, and they know me, and they follow me. The emphasis here being on the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. It is that statement which made it so difficult for the Jews to understand who Jesus was. For that statement certainly turned upside down their understanding of leadership. It was a new concept that Jesus was introducing, a concept of a suffering leader, a concept that was totally alien to them. For to the Jews of that day, the Good Shepherd has to be a conquering person, a person who is willing to die in protecting his sheep. And here it was, Jesus was producing something that was new and different and they couldn't digest that. I must make the point here that this new concept that Jesus was introducing, the author of the Gospel of John started to make that point for us in the ninth chapter of the Gospel of St. John. In that ninth chapter, we hear Jesus, along with his disciples, on the way to Jerusalem, and they came across a blind person and disciples asking the question, Master, who sinned that this man was born blind? That word of being the traditional position that somebody born blind, blind from birth, had to be the result of some sin that was committed by one of the parents. 
And Jesus' response turned this totally upside down. For Jesus responded, this is not about sin. This is about so that the glory of God can be seen. And when you go through that same ninth chapter, we see how this understanding produced a challenge for the religious leaders of the day. For even as that person who was given back his sight went into the temple and was among the religious leaders, they asked the question, how did you see? And when he identified Jesus as being the person giving back his sight, they couldn't accept it because one, Jesus didn't follow their way of doing things. Two, Jesus was introducing what appeared to be new, strange, and different ways of doing things, and therefore, Jesus could not have been of God. We hear the blind man later on testifying that as far as he was concerned, Jesus was of God, for if Jesus was not of God, he could not do these things. The point that is coming out here, which the fathers want us to pay attention to, is that it becomes absolutely important for all of us to be open to the new ways in which God is working his purpose out. You see, the God that we serve is an active and alive God. He is not a dead or static God that is buried in tradition. In addition to that, he is an infinite God. That is to say, we can never ever have the total understanding of God and how God works. John, at this point in the gospel, is saying to the people then, as he's saying to us today, and as he said down through the ages and will continue to say until we get to our end point in God, he's making the point that those who serve God must always be constantly open to the new and mysterious ways in which God is working his purpose out. And that is necessary to be open to these new ways, lest we find ourselves becoming stumbling blocks in the way of God's work. And you know, it is this same stumbling block attitude that leads us to the next aspect of the suffering community. For as Jesus pursued the mission given to him by God, Jesus had to be first and foremost open to God's way of doing his purpose. One of the things you notice in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 4, the verse, first verse to begin with, that immediately after Jesus' baptism, he was led up into the wilderness. Matthew says to be tempted. I like to think of it in a slightly different manner. He was led up away from the noise of the crowd so that he can focus and reflect on what the mission before him was about and have a clear understanding of what God wanted. Not what he, Jesus, wanted, but what God wanted him to do. And that is reflected in the several temptations about doing things in a manner other than the way God wanted it done. At the end of it all, we notice that Jesus Christ attained victory through the cross because of his obedience to God's will, which led to the type of death and suffering he had. It is this same point that is taken up in the Revelation reading 
which speaks about all those who would follow Christ must be prepared for the new and different ways in which God is working his purpose out, must be prepared, among other things, for the universality of God's saving grace, and be prepared to walk the way of suffering that will take us eventually into the joy of Easter. And so you'll notice in the Revelation readings, there the seer sees a great number of people that cannot be, could not have been numbered of all nations in worshiping God. And that's interesting. For immediately, the old understanding that only God's chosen 12 tribes of Israel would receive paradise, that is immediately challenged and change. For notice, the seer saw a great number of all nations. Again, notice, immediately challenged there is the understanding that only one set of people can participate in God's victory. That is immediately challenged. And then, the most important point, the says asks, who are these? The response come in, those are they who have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. And therefore, they stand before the throne day and night, and the Lamb shall be their shepherd. We have very often romanticized this understanding of washing their robes in the blood of the Lamb. But what that says is that these are persons who are ready and willing to walk the walk of Jesus. That is to say, being obedient to the will of God were prepared to suffer whatever came their way, cause it what it will, they were prepared to take on the mantle of Jesus, of taking of thy cross and following him, denying themselves. What therefore is the message and challenge for us here at Trinity as we celebrate the joy of Easter, as the fathers hold before us this understanding that the community that celebrates the joy of Easter is the suffering community that conquers, not a community that conquers, but happen to suffer. Well, first and foremost, it says to us that like in the Gospel of John, we need to be ready and open to the new and different ways God is working his purpose out. We need to be prepared to move as God reveals himself to us in new, mysterious, and different ways. We need to be able to embrace new things so that we don't find ourselves being stumbling blocks in the way of God. Yes, the apostles have said to us, we must test the spirits, and that is absolutely important. But more than anything else, as we test the spirit, look at the testimony of the works that are happening around us in this parish. And let those works speak to us to move us from a state where we may find ourselves holding on to, we have never done it this way. This is strange, or the same old, same old, and propel us into the new vision that God opens before us through the present context. It is a challenge that says for us in the church, individually and collectively as groups and group leaders, that first and foremost, yes, we have to hear God in Christ speaking to us as through the Great Commission. 
and as articulated in the five marks of mission. But even as we have these to guide us and direct us, we must know that God is constantly calling us and challenging us to find new ways to see how he reveals himself and work his purpose out. Here is an example to pay attention to. So we have been involved here at Trinity in the Banana Festival, and much has been said about that. But few people take the time to understand the vision of Trinity at this time. It is a vision that speaks about the five marks of mission, a vision which takes on board in particular the third mark, that of responding to human need in loving service. And so for us, therefore, in responding to the need of this community, this nation, where there is a growing population of homeless people, a growing population of people in need, a growing population that is affected by domestic violence and other things, the church understands that if we are going to respond to that need in love and service, we cannot simply hand out a bread today and a bread tomorrow. If we seek to do that, we will be part of that group that simply keep people where they are and oppress them. We have to be able to understand what are the avenues that God has given to us to help to liberate people so that they can be independent, earn a living, and thereby experience the joy of the Easter community. That's the type of challenge that is put before us here at Trinity. That is the challenge for every individual member and group here at Trinity to get on board, have your eyes open to the new and mysterious ways in which God is doing the same old things, but in a new manner. When we begin to understand the ramification of this movement, truly, the words of the colic must be on our lips daily. Grant that we, when we hear his voice, we know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed found on page 106. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, Son our Lord. Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Intercession Form D, found in page 
page 111. Our Heavenly Father has promised through our Lord Jesus Christ to hear us when we pray in faith. Let us therefore pray for the church and the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. We pray for the Church of God in every place, especially for this province. Howard, our Archbishop, Leopold, our Bishop, and all the people of God. Strengthen your Church to carry forward the work of Christ, that we and all who confess your name may unite in truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory. To the world. We pray for our country and for all the nations of the world, especially Russia and Ukraine, and for all peoples in their various callings. Direct this nation and all nations in the ways of justice and truth. Give wisdom to all in positions of public trust, trust and authority. authority that they may promote the prosperity, godliness, and peace of your people everywhere. We pray for our own community from which we come, for this parish of Holy Trinity with St. Mary, for our families, friends, and all who live and work with us. Give grace to all our friends and neighbors in Christ, that we may serve him in one another, and grow together in his love. We pray for the poor, the sick, the unemployed, the handicapped, all who have requested our prayers, and all who seek the prayers of the church in their time of trouble. Give healing and strength to all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and sustain all those who remember and care for them. We commemorate the departed, especially those who have died within the last 24 hours. We remember all people to your unfailing love, that in them your will may be fulfilled, and rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may share with them in your kingdom. Accept these prayers, O Lord our God, for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The Act of Penitence on page 123, page 1, 2, 3. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Using Form A, let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen all goodness, and keep in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The greeting of peace, Form C. 
The kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit. They who thus serve Christ are accepted to God and approved by others. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Using our COVID-19 format, let us greet each other with God's peace. Please be seated for the reading of the notices. If you have not yet placed your offering in the basket, now is a good time to do so. Blessings to everyone and welcome to our service at Holy Trinity with St. Mary the Virgin for the fourth Sunday of Easter. To all our visitors and those worshiping with us via the technology, wishing you a warm welcome and do have a spirit-filled and peaceful Sunday. Services, of the, at the, services for the week at Holy Trinity, Monday morning services, Monday to Friday at 6.30 a.m., Wednesday services, 12 noon with Holy Eucharist, which is re recorded service and televised for rebroadcast on the following television stations. Choice TV at 7.30 a.m., Calabash TV at 8 a.m., and MTN TV at 9 a.m. Sunday services at Holy Trinity is at 6 a.m. and 8.30 a.m., and at St. Mary the Virgin at 11 a.m. Virtual confirmation class is on Saturday at 1.30 p.m. and virtual Sunday school is at 2.30 p.m. And choir practice on Saturday at 3 p.m. Easter envelopes are still available, so you can place your offering on the basket at the offering table. And readers, please make note that the month of, 22, um, the month of May 2022 readings are available, so Take note of when you're supposed to read. <laughs> the executive and members of ACWA wish to extend a huge thank you to the members of the congregation who joined us on our walk and fellowship on Monday, 2nd May. Your presence certainly added joy to the day, so many thanks again. We also wish to remind you of the Parish of Grace River Dory extends an invitation to our parish to join them on Whit Monday lunch and barbecue, that is on Monday, 6 June, from 12 p.m. at the Tweet Tweet Park in, Ro in River Dory, and you'll be treated to delicious pork, fish, and chicken, and the cost of these tickets are $20, and you are requested to book your tickets very early by Friday, 20th May, 2022, and you can do so at the church office. And they need to do that so that there's adequate catering and everybody will get their meal. So please, it's a good time for fellowship with our sister parish. Birthday and anniversary greetings to persons celebrating to today or in the coming week. God's blessings on your special day. Any birthday celebrants? Holy Spirit, amen. Lord God, we join as your daughter, Esther, and offer you thanks and praise for spending her life for yet another year. We pray, O Father, that as you've been in the years past, may continue in the years to come, to God, guide, direct, protect, and to bless her. We ask his mercy and all the mercies. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord, the light is come and shine upon and give you peace, now and forevermore. Amen. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. May the good Lord bless you, may the good Lord bless you, 
Mira good Lord, Mira good Lord, Mira good Lord, bless you. Thank you very much. You know, when you reach a certain age, you tend to forget certain things. Anybody traveling? Let us pray. In the name of God, his Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, you've given to us just gifts and skills and talents. You've given us the skill of creating travel by land, air, or water. Pray this, your daughter, Gloria, as she leads these shows this week. We ask, Father, to go before her, to guard her, direct her, protect her, take her safe to several destinations, and give her good success on her various missions. And Lord, if it's your will, return her to be heard us once more. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord light his come and shine up and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Lead us, heavenly Father, lead us. O'er the world's tempestuous sea. Guide us, guard us, keep us, feed us, for we have no help but Thee. Yet possess in every blessing, if our God, our Father, be safe travels, Gloria. Safe travels, Gloria. Come again soon. Never forget that you always have inside of you the strength and courage to overcome any obstacle that may come your way. Stay positive, stay strong, and always trust God. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Esther, and you as well. Our, our offertory hymn, 173, hymn 173. one to six for the presentation of the offerings and the Eucharistic prayer she is Eucharistic prayer A Eucharistic prayer A
The Eucharist is celebrated in honor and glory of God. Bring before Almighty God all our cares and concerns to the living. Remember all you've been praying for, all of our so prayers and the prayers of the church. We pray especially for ourselves that we should hear the voice of our Savior, recognize it, and follow where he leads. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we offer you these gifts that you have given us, this bread, this wine, and this money. With them we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work to become through your Holy Spirit a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become channels of your love to do the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God, for chiefly I bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. By his rise into life again, he has won for us eternal life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All holy and glorious Father, our Creator God. We give you thanks because in your love and wisdom you brought all things into being and are truly worthy of praise from every creature you have made. Again and again you have turned away from you, yet in every age your steadfast love has called us to return to live in you and enrich you. For it is your eternal purpose to put new life into all things and make them holy. Through your Son, uh, Jesus Christ, who took our human nature upon him, you have redeemed the world from the bondage of sin, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, you have gathered the people to yourself to make known in every place his perfect offering, which you made to the glory of your name. Hear us, therefore, Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and grant that these gifts of bread and wine be beyond to us his body and blood. For on the night his betrayed, he took bread. And when he given thanks to you, he broke it. And gave it to the disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took a cup of wine. When he gave thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whatever you drink it, do this for remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Heavenly Father, rejoice in His holy incarnation, His blessed passion, and His perfect sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, His mighty resurrection from the dead, His glorious ascension into heaven, 
and looking for his coming again in glory, you offer you this bread and this cup. We pray that you'd accept this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and grant that all who eat and drink of the body and blood of your Son, our great High Priest, be renewed by your Holy Spirit, come one body and one spirit in him. Let faith and love increase in us. Unite is all bishops, especially Howard our Archbishop, Leopold our Bishop, all of the ministers of the word and sacraments, the whole people of God, living and departed, whom you have made for yourself. Confirm us in holiness, that we may be found ready to join the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the holy apostles and all their sins, when our Lord Jesus Christ comes again, forever giving you thanks and praise to him from whom all good things to come with him and in him and through him by the power of the holy spirit we worship you father almighty to those who stand between earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise blessing, blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever amen as our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. So we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take with the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take with the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, you take with the sin of the world. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Invite the children who be at home to simply bow their heads to receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord the light and scalp and shine up and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The post communion prayer, page 148, 148. The second prayer on that page, page 148. Let us pray. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. God raise you from the death of sin to walk with Christ in his risen life. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Express our gratitude to the several media houses for carrying this service on this Sunday morning as a public service to this nation. We are truly grateful for this service which you render week by week. May Almighty God bless you in your endeavors. The recessional hymn, hymn 167, hymn 167.